Hello everyone, I'm Mr. Furlong, and today we're talking about the Big Bang Theory. Our whole universe was in a hot, dense state that nearly 14 billion years ago expansion started. Wait, the earth began to cool, the autotrophs began to drool, Neanderthals developed tools, we built a wall. We built the pyramids, math, science, history, unraveling the mystery that all started with a Big Bang. Hey! No, no, not that Big Bang Theory. The scientific Big Bang Theory. Now we're not going to get into specifics on this, but just in general, we'll take a look at what it is and what some evidence that we have to support this idea of how the universe had formed. The Big Bang Theory simply says that at one point the universe was in what's called a singularity. In other words, all the matter in the universe was condensed down to a single point no bigger than the size of an atom. Now, for us, it really is very difficult to think about how could something like that happen. But we have to think that mass was not in the form then that it is in now. And then there was this rapid expansion. This mass was hurled in all different directions, forming the universe. Eventually, the subatomic particles had formed. So now we're getting into things like protons and neutrons and electrons. They eventually formed into atoms. And the universe eventually began to cool, gravity starts making stars, and forming galaxies. So what's some evidence that we have that supports this idea of the Big Bang? Well, first off, is there is the red shifting of galaxies. Now this is due to something known as the Doppler effect. The wavelengths of a moving object changes depending on if it's coming towards us or away from this. Now we experience this, uh, for instance, when we hear a siren. The sound of the siren is different if the ambulance is moving toward us compared to if it's moving away from us. By looking at the red shifting of the galaxies, and we'll do a lab on this later on, it shows that these distant galaxies are moving away from us, which would indicate that the universe is expanding. There's also something known as cosmic microwave background radiation. That's a, that's a mouthful there. Uh, after the expansion, energy was released in the form of radiation. And this energy, theoretically, should still be expanding at the edge of the universe. So think about that. The known universe has an ending to it. Now it's constantly getting larger in size. But what's on the other side of that universe boundary? So to confirm this, NASA sent out a probe that found the red shifting of this radiation that was released at the time of the explosion. Also predicted was the abundance of primordial elements. In an explosion like this, we would expect that most of the atoms would be very simple, hydrogen and helium. Specifically, the molecules of helium-3 and 4, hydrogen-2, and lithium-7. Just so happens that these are the most common elements in the universe. And it was in the same exact percentages that the models predicted if there was this gigantic explosion. We would also look at galactic evolution and their distribution. So distant galaxies appear different than nearby galaxies do. The farther the galaxies are away, the more time they have to change than younger galaxies. So not all galaxies look alike. For instance, here are two spiral galaxies. And by spiral, we see that the stars within the galaxies are spinning. Which of these do you think is the older galaxy? If you said this one, you would be correct. Now why do we know this? Well, have you ever seen a bunch of ice skaters all twirling in a row and uh, sometimes the outer ones, they get thrown off of the edge because they're moving so fast. Well, the same thing is happening with stars. And these stars on the outer edge of the galaxies are being thrown off, if you will, from the center of the galaxy. Whereas uh, the one on the left here, uh, all those spirals are still pretty tight. That's a young galaxy. This is an older galaxy. Now, galaxies can take on some pretty weird shapes. Sometimes galaxies collide with one another. So here we see two galaxies coming close to colliding. And then they really take on this odd shape as they get older. And so the galaxies that are farther away from us, that are older than us, uh, they tend to have this shape. Whereas the galaxies closer to us, the younger galaxies, are more spiral in shape. And we're finding galaxies all the time. This is a shot from the Hubble Space Telescope. And what looks like stars there are actually galaxies. In fact, in one recent photo from Hubble, over 2,000 new galaxies were discovered from one photograph. So 
Well, there's lots of different galaxies, each one containing hundreds of billions of stars. So that is the scientific explanation as to how the universe had formed. Not the most detailed explanation, but I think you get the idea. So we're going to look at galaxies and the different types of galaxies and how to classify them in our next activity. And I'll see you in class.